What's up out there? Welcome back to some more Melver Idol. And today I want to take a look at a little bit more township. Um, I've had some more time to spend with this. I have um, some notes gathered up a little bit, maybe from Reddit. And they updated the wiki page, which you can get to from here. This is the official wiki. They've added a bunch of updates to it. They did not include a whole lot for township, but I did glean some things out of it and just some other general thoughts that I have about it. And then some comments that people have put on some of my videos. So let's dive into this. And this is going to be probably two parts. So the first part is going to be just some general tips, tricks, whatever you want to call it. And then I've actually cloned my standard account. I let this thing run overnight. We'll get into what I did to it in the next video, I think. But I want to actually click buttons and make things happen and then demonstrate some things that I've figured out. So that's going to be part two. All right. This one hit me this morning when I was laying in bed and thinking about how I was going to do this video. This skill, I've seen a lot of people hate this skill and say it shouldn't be in the game or anything, you know, they have a lot of negative things to say about it. And I kind of beg to differ in a way. And this is starting to feel like summoning did. When summoning came out, I was really indifferent to it. I didn't see the benefits of it. And I didn't understand summoning at first. And it took me a long time to come around to it. And this skill I, I, I'm enjoying. Uh, I mean, there's some definite things that could be done. Um, I'd love to I saw somebody comment that they thought the interface looked like an Excel spreadsheet, which kind of, yeah, it does. Um, I wish there was more on your buildings. I wish there was more indication of what building could go where I wish you could, I don't know. I wish there was, I know there's like filters and things, but there's certain things, aspects to this that could use some definite improvement mostly with the way the UE works and how you select things. And, and I don't know, we're not going to get into all that. My point with this is that you need to really treat this like any other skill that's in the game. So for instance, the base game has fletching and this has been here forever since I started playing probably what, two years ago when this game came out into early access. Um, if I want to go make, um, let's say dragon javelins, this was the big money maker. You're going to have to go into wood cutting and get the wood. And not only that, you're going to have to go into mining and you're going to have to mine up coal. And let's see what else is there. Runite and Dragonite, because you have to combine all that together into smithing to make the Dragonite bars and then go over dragon and make the um, dragon javelin heads. And then you can go over to Fletching and combine it all together. And I think you really need to start looking at Township from that standpoint instead of, oh, it's its own skill and it's got its own things in it. Yes, it is a self-contained skill and you can do some things from within it. You could probably build a town up from scratch and maybe go through the uh, task list in here, get those done, get your XP for it. Um, but I think there's a better way of doing things, and that's with the trader, which we'll get into here in a second. Number two, any reset starts you back with 144 ticks. So if you reset, you're gonna go back. However, if you have ticks to spend, the carryover comes back with you. So you don't really lose anything. If you spend it, you've spent it. If you've gained money, XP, or something off of it, you've lost it. But so if you restart with 144, you can restart with more than that. That's not the way to say that. If you, you will restart with 144, but you can restart with more if you have them banked up. You just can't spend them yet. So ticks are basically something to spend, and once spent, they're gone. Uh, map 11 and Ter with the Terran God seems to be the, the one that everybody likes. That's what I'm using right now. Uh, you basically have no snowlands and no desert and no water. I'm not sure how I feel about the water, but the desert has this clothing tick that kind of sucks. And then the, our clothing requirement and snowlands have a cold tick. So if you get rid of those two, that's like the two worst ones to deal with. Um, so if you just don't have them or very, have very little of them, you don't have to worry about it. So you could throw some other buildings in there, let that cost go. Uh, but that is um map number 11 and the Terran god because you get some good bonuses and stuff in that let's see what is it um i have to go to my phone here 
Uh, you lose 50% township production for fishing dock buildings, which would be in the water area, which we don't have. And then minus 75 township leather production, which goes to here. No, it's the desert. No, it's just clothing in the desert. So you lose some leather. I'm not sure what leather's good for yet. We'll we'll dive into that as we get going. Um, but I don't know. That's that's what I'm working with now. That's what I'm going to try out. And then, then when you hit this town button, you can get a nice overview of where everything of all the buildings that you have. Um, I wish this was set up a little bit differently so that you could maybe see what buildings, like maybe each underneath each one of these, like the grasslands or forest or whatever, had like a list of what buildings were there, maybe show, put the name on it. And then when you click on the area, then you get this card that shows the buildings to be upgraded uh, because you can't do anything with this and you don't know what buildings are where. And that's one of the issues that I've run into is I want to add something, but I don't know where I've added the other stuff. And I don't know, that gets kind of confusing. Um, let's see here. Trading. This is the big one that I wanted to cover in this because I did not cover this when I did the tutorial video. So with trading, I believe you need 200 population to actually activate or create a trader. You only need one. Um, additional traders aren't going to do you any good. You just need one. It just has to be there. It doesn't come faster or slower. It just one is it. Uh, they are useful for transferring materials into and out of your township, which we're going to cover here in a second. Um, let's see, there was something else I wanted to bring up. Oh, they're available every 96 ticks and they're available for 12 ticks. So I've, I've, mine's going to leave in a couple. So where I was getting at earlier, comparing this to fletching is once you have the trader here and you can trade stuff in and out with him. Now is the time to treat this like fletching. So I got this, I rebuilt my town and I don't know how many ticks I've actually applied to it because now it's sat overnight, but I got it to the point where I advanced it as far as I needed to. And then I got it to the point where the trader was there and I accidentally clicked the damn button once. Um, but I got the trader here and I've been passing materials in so that I can build buildings. To that point, I have all 200, and I, I made a mistake on this, which is with the town halls, but I transferred, I, I used the materials I had, built as many wooden huts as I could, and then in the grasslands, I've decided, where did I put my notes at? Somewhere around here, I have, yeah. So in the grasslands, I'm going to do housing. This is all housing. So this is all going to be housing and upgraded, and that's that. Forest is going to be wood and food, wood production and food. So we're going to have hunter's cabins for leather. It's not food, but it's, you know, hunter and tailor. Uh, that's where I put my trading post, the woodcutter's camp, the carpenter's workshop. And I'm going to put a bunch of farms in here. So these I figure I'll need less of, but more farmlands. And then there's a way to counteract some of the farm stuff here in a second, too. Uh, in the mountains, I've started building smiths, miners' pits. That's where I put my town hall, cemetery, prat hats, storehouses, taverns, this kind of crap in here. I'm kind of separating things out into different sections. Don't know if that's a good idea or not, but the forest is huge, so I could put some stuff back there. And then the arid plains, I dumped some schools into. Um, it's got the fewest, and it can support schools, so I figured I'd I'm, what I'm trying to do is put stuff in places that makes a little bit of sense to me and then just stack them all in that one spot. I don't think there's any benefit to putting a school in each area. Like there's no requirements that you have to have a school here in the grasslands um, I, that I know of. So you can just stack whatever you want and then, you know, that's how that goes. At least that's what I think. So I got it to the point where I have all the buildings that are built here. And then I, I forgot, uh, I quickly realized I needed to have been building town halls. And I don't know how many town halls you need, probably a lot, but every town hall contributes towards the cost reduction of buildings. And I should have done this before I put the wood huts in, then I wouldn't have wasted as much, but I digress on that one. So this is capped at 80 minus 80%. I believe it was minus 100% to begin with. People started exploiting that and then the, the developers changed it to minus 80. So 
I'm going to try to build that up and I want to get as many town halls built as I possibly can. And here's where I have my issue. I'd like to be able to either click on this building or see a list somewhere that says where those town halls are. And like if you had a column here with rows that showed checkboxes of what buildings were in what or maybe the, not checkboxes, but the numbers, put the numbers here and detail where they're at and then let me click on, I don't know, it just seems... This is why I reset because my my um, the whole thing was just muddy and I couldn't tell what was where. I ran out of spaces in a lot of different spots and that was on the starter map and then it just got ugly and I didn't want to deal with it. So that's why I restarted and I'll get off that soapbox. But um, trading uh, townhouses, kind of moving in different directions here. I did spend a lot of time wood cutting and mining overnight so I can transfer stuff in. When we get to the demonstration portion of this, I'll explain that a little further and see if it made any difference. But basically I did some wood cutting and mining to feed my town before the trader leaves. So I'm not advancing these tick buttons until I get enough stuff to do what I wanted to do, which has also given me, um, mastery pool and all that kind of thing for this stuff. So it, it's all good. Anyway, going into the trader itself, once you've got the trader, you can pull things into, give resources to your town or take resources from your town. From what almighty Reddit says, um, you want to trade out, do I have it on here? I don't see it. Why don't I see that on here? Have I not caught one? Hmm. They said take out magic fish to make money if you're going to take it out and take out uh, jellyfish, which I'm pretty sure I have jellyfish, don't I? I don't know. It's inconsequential. That's odd. I thought I had caught all the new stuff. No. The next thing I wanted to bring up about this is you can't transfer anything in or out or a thing I wanted to bring up is you can't transfer anything in or out unless you found it. So if you haven't found it, you can't take it out. And it looks like I don't have any of the new fish, so I'll have to do that. But the recommendation was to take magic fish and jellyfish out and make some money off of it. Um, this is another thing that I think could really stand some improvement. Like I want to use a tree to, I, I want to take resources. Well, I'm sorry. I want to give resources to this, but I don't know what the hell trees I cut. Well, now I have to, I guess you can mouse over them. That, that works. But I wish there was some way it just listed things and said, you have so many of these, do you want to transfer them over or something a little easier? Cause finding these, you almost have to click through them all to find them. Uh, especially on mobile. It's not that great. Uh, the one thing to note here is coal can be used for stone. I believe it's right here, or it can be used for um, coal. If you, I would not do this because I, tra I, I traded coal for stone and then immediately turned around and said, well, I need coal. And then I had used all my coal up. So I would not use this trade for stone. I would use it for coal and leave that up there. But the way this thing works, I want to transfer something in. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, I need to get, um, I believe stone. We'll just do stone. So I've got a whole bunch of divinite ore. I can click on this. It asks me a percentage. It, it kind of sucks because it almost, I almost want a slider on there like you get in the other stuff. Um, but it goes by percentages. So you can do 10%, 25, 50, 75. 90%, 100% are all but one. And then once you confirm it, that actually shows up in your uh, stack up here. What I'm not clear of is if you transfer it in but have your storage full, does it overflow or does it not transfer some of it? Or do you just lose something? I'm not quite sure on that yet. Um, to get stuff out is the same way. You just click on the take resources from, click on this, and then pick a percentage. Now I've got a decent chunk of food here. So I'll give myself 10%, but like 100% is only 157 fish. It's not very much. Now, once you get this to where you're making millions of food, then you transfer it over. But the transfer rates on these kind of suck. Um, like you got to catch a lot of stuff. It takes 390 fish over there to come out to one or 1,440 whale food to come out. It's, it's actually food, not fish, but you transform it into whatever. 
So that's where you, you can kind of make money here. This is how much you're going to get paid every time you click the tick button. But then as you generate resources, you can pull stuff out. It's got a horrible transfer rate. So you, you don't necessarily want to pull out random crap that, you know, like, uh, like if we go to wood logs here, uh, transferring out, uh, it's six to one. That's not bad at all. That's kind of interesting. You can actually get a lot of wood, just regular wood. And then this stuff, you have to take a lot out to, eh, I don't know. The transfer rate stuff's kind of, it's not advantageous necessarily. Getting the fish out, I think is good. Making money there. I, get, I guess that's the real money. But still, I I don't know. I, again, we're all learning this whole thing. So it is what it is. But that's the trading portion of it. Uh, I would not neglect going into agility and setting anything in here like your um, gold, 40% gold uh, for that one. You get 10% gold there, global gold, I should say, and then 15% global gold here. This one's from agility. Uh, I switched a bunch of these over, but you want to find anything in here that has to do with making money, boosting your XP or working directly off of township like this skill here so you can get extra township xp i made sure to prioritize that and then there's township resource generation which and then maximum storage township happiness and building costs i don't have this last one yet um, i'm just not bothered with it but you want to get these things boosted up as as soon as possible if you're going to work on township because you want these you want to be able to use these up i mean once once you're maxed out township there's no point in the xp so if you're going to come around and get that later you've lost the benefit from it so keep an eye out for those things uh let's see orchards if you're building stuff and you have a chance to build orchards where are my orchards i thought they were here maybe they are in the jungle these things boo they ha I, I believe the little symbol there is for workers so they add a lot of workers uh, it's because I'm building 10. Um, so you get five workers per orchard, as I understand that. And this thing boosts your food productivity by 267.2. So whatever food you have, it boosts it. And these things really help. That real bastardized town that I had, uh, I kept, I, once I found orchards, I started building a whole bunch of them and my food production just skyrocketed. So uh, at some point, you will probably come into town here and into this town section and maybe demolish certain buildings and then build some different stuff. Um, I read something about taverns, increased production, things like that. So there's some things we're going to play with at some point. Um, your town's happiness gets you more XP, but it's unhappiness makes you more gold or something, something along that way, which segues into a working population makes you money. Uh, town health and potions can affect age and death. So once you go into the citizen section here and start seeing people over 55, uh, every tick moves people older. And once they hit 55, they have like, I think it said it was hundred percent. This was from the wiki itself. They have a hundred percent chance to die past 55, but things like health, this health up here and the potions that you have here, um, can help that lower so they live longer now longer life means less dead people means less cemetery stuff like that i guess i don't know again we're gonna have to deal with that at some point and figure it out but there are cemeteries and the cemeteries deal with the corpses which i thought showed up somewhere in here uh, maybe it's in population dead storage i don't have anybody there nobody's died yet and like I said, health and all that comes into play for people that are over 55. More happiness gains more XP, as mentioned earlier. And to get happiness, you can actually go and build these town halls. Now, this is what my current quest is for the township skill, is to build more town halls, get this up to 80%, get this 2,000, or well, it's right now it's 2,000, but get this happiness bonus as high as possible. I want to max this thing out at... 120. I want to get as much skill as I can towards this. And a quick side note, make sure you have the superior fire cape on 
because it gives you, if you have it, it gives you plus eight global skill XP, uh, the ancient ring of skills. If you have, it's another 8% skill XP. And then if you bought it yet, the pirate captain hat gives you plus 2% township skill XP. So there's a lot of bonuses plus the, the agility bonuses you can get again, summoning or, uh, astro yeah, astrology, agility and astrology. Um, let's see more education. The more schoolhouses you get, the more they produce. So if you want to produce a lot of goods, make more schoolhouses, uh, which is something we'll test to see how that works. Deity worship has gains, uh, from building chapels. So the more, if you're trying to raise this, this here and get more of the bonuses, like as you get 25%, you get more town production from orchards, uh, 50 gives more 85 and then hundred percent gives more bonuses. So the more churches you build, the more bonuses you get activated from worshiping a particular God. Uh, I think I also read that those gods aren't available until you beat the God dungeons and Bane is definitely not available until you beat him. Um, according to the wiki. So there is that. And what other combinations of stuff can we get that work well with whatever God or map combination? I don't know. We'll, we'll find out as we go. But the wiki does have a good building and biome chart to look at to see what you can build where. Uh, that's another thing that could be improved here because I don't necessarily know what all I can build. And I have to kind of just click through building or click through the areas to see what you can build. Like I can do a magic emporium here. But if I'm starting to fish around for like an arid plain, uh, I, I would expect to be able to build certain other things like maybe an orchard or something. I, I don't know. Some of that stuff seems a little odd. It'd be nice if there was some kind of chart or something that showed what could build where. And then you could just say, I want to build this building in that area or something instead of having to click through all this. Again, it comes back to the UI. Could use some sprucing up. So that is kind of the end of the tips and tricks part of this thing that I've found so far. I don't know if any of that's been helpful, but... We're going to go and tinker around with the actual area and click some buttons and make things happen. So uh, that will do it for this video. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.